Thank you for the introduction. Yes, my name is Ian, and I work at the Wyoming Migration Initiative in Laramie, Wyoming. Um, I am really just be go going to be giving a very shallow and brief overview of how we've used cartography to aid in conservation of migratory ungulates across um, first Wyoming and how that expanded to the western United States and now to the globe. And before discussing maps, which I know we all want, um, we need to make sure we understand what an ungulate is and why migration is so important. Um, an ungulate, uh, these are some com common ungulates across the western United States. An ungulate is a hooved mammal. Um, and while not all ungulates migrate, many of them do. And in the western United States, um, we commonly see migration between summer range and winter range. Um, the summer is important for them to get more nutritious forage, and it's usually located in higher elevations like the hills or mountains. And then during the winter, it's important for them to travel back, usually into lower elevations, to survive the harsher conditions of the winter. And this is important when it comes to conserving um, our ungulate populations because it requires that they have large connected habitats to maintain healthy populations and in turn healthy ecosystems. Um, unfortunately, there are many threats to these migrations. Uh, that can include things like increased housing development in um, migration corridors or um, increased uh, amounts of fences that they have to cross um, each migration and increased roadway traffic um, leading to collisions as well as other things like climate change, competition with other species, disease, and so on. Um, but have you, as you've seen, these maps can be really helpful in identifying and visualizing these issues. Um, and that is foundational to our work at the Wyoming Migration Initiative, um, where we use GPS data from uh, graduate students or other partners to make maps for outreach and scientific journals and various other reports. And as you may have seen um, in the previous slides as well, this mapping has been heavily supported with the amazing cartography of the infographics lab. Um, and this collaboration between cartographers and scientists has been really instrumental in helping educate conservation um, across Wyoming. You may also be familiar with the Wild Migrations Atlas. I think this was presented on by Jim Meacham in uh, the 2018 NASIS, and it's an amazing collection of um, maps all about migratory ungulates throughout Wyoming. So thank you to the Infographics Lab um, also for teaching me how to make maps and getting me here. Um, but the importance of these maps is, um, well, the creation of these well-designed and detailed maps is um, great to showcase migrations and the threats to migrations and has helped inform things like the placement of wildlife crossing structures. Um, it's helped educate fence modification and removal um, in migration routes and where to prioritize things like future conservation easements on private lands. Um, and much of this foundational work was done in Wyoming, but it has since expanded far beyond the rest of the Western United States with the uh, Department of Interior, Interior Secretarial Order that called to improve habitat quality in Western Big Game uh, winter range and migra migration corridors. Um, this created the Corridor Mapping Team, which is a partnership between the USGS, um, who provides the funding and the coordination and structure of the project. and with Western states and tribal nations who um, provide GPS data and their technical and local expertise. So, so far in four volumes, um, 182 herds have been mapped all across the West, um, and these are available in the four reports um, as well as online. And, um, I'm going to change the order of these slides real quick. Um, primarily, primarily um, these Map, this mapping has been done um, and with the visualization of migration data as corridors um, using a Brownian Bridge movement model analysis which takes the routes um, and produces a heat map or probability surface of what land the animals will use during their migration. 
And this is then categorized into three values, the low, medium, and high use corridor, which uh, helps to simplify, simplify and identify priority areas. Um, and the example on the right here shows how this is aided in the placement of crossing structures um, along the Interstate 80 and US Highway 93 in Nevada. Um, and then to go back, of course, that doesn't always work for every uh, set of migration data. So there's also maps of winter range or migration routes and um, annual ranges as well throughout these volumes. But migratory ungulates across the world are also seeing increased barriers and landscape change as well. These are some fun looking different ungulates across the world. I like the, the saiga antelope a lot. Um, and so an example of how these barriers have been affecting uh, other species. One example is the Kulan in Mongolia. Um, researchers from uh, Mongolia and Norway were tracking Kulan from 2013 to 2019. Um, and as seen, they range across a very large habitat. I think the Kulan in the purple line um, traveled over 8,000 miles in 700 days or more than 4,000 miles per year. Um, and unfortunately, in 2022, new railways were built that cut right through the middle of this habitat. And because of steep embankments and fences along these railways, uh, we've seen with recent GPS data that the uh, Kulan have a hard time uh, getting through and past these new barriers and end up moving along the tracks for great distances without being able to cross. And these maps are instrumental in highlighting these threats and hopefully with a clear depiction of um, where these animals move, we could help mitigate these, uh, the impact of these developments in the future. So this is how we came to the Global Initiative on Ungulate Migration. Um, with this in mind, a large group of scientists and conservationists formed what we call GUM um, in 2020. And um, this, the goal of this is to create a global atlas or inventory of ungulate migration um, using tracking data and expert knowledge and to stimulate research on drivers, mechanisms, um, threats, and conservation solutions common to ungulate migration worldwide. And um, in a science article um, published in 2021, they laid out the foundation for this um, and it, that this initiative would be made up of migration maps derived of empirical data um, and depict movements animals make on an annual basis and that this would all be held under the auspices of the United Nations Convention on Migratory Species um, as this is the best neutral and respected horse uh, source to host this data. Um, so one of the primary features or products would be to uh, have a web viewer that is hosted on the CMS website, which um, would show the migration data shared by members of GUM across the globe. Um, the infographics lab is currently helping us to produce a better looking base map for that, uh, which is lovely. And each of these populations would then also have a fact sheet that corresponds with it that would help provide a more like curated um, and detailed um, story about each population. So this would include a text description of like the population, the threats, and various other scientific um, facts. But importantly, it would also include a detailed map um, designed to provide a better indication of movements in relation to the landscape and potential barriers. And um, that's what I've been working on for the past year or so, off and on. Um, and for this, we wanted to achieve a well-branded, produce a well-branded and standardized map design that can be applied to ungulates all over the world. Um, but this is a tricky task, I soon found out, because it's a, the world is a big place and there's obviously very different types of migrations or movements across different populations. Um, tracking data looks different in a lot of different places and is in a lot of different um, stages of research. Um, 
And there's also a varying avail availability and varying resolution of base data for different regions of the globe. So I'll walk you through each of these and some of the conclusions that, were, that I drew from working on this. Um, so we wanted to be consistent in our visualization method of the data as much as possible, but obviously this wouldn't be an easy task, um, as we knew. Because um, while most um, migration, or sometimes we have clear migrations, like this one with the red desert mule deer in Wyoming, which is, has narrow and consistent uh, corridors of repeated use. But throughout Wyoming in the western US and the globe, uh, most are not this simple. And as you can see with the Sheep Mountain mule deer, it's a little more uh, complicated and uh, harder to understand. But we also see migrations like the ibex in the Alps um, that don't cover very much distance and are much more uh, altitudinal, uh, covering thousands of feet in elevation gain uh, in only a few short miles. And we even see um, cases of migration following more circular patterns, such as the white-eared cob in South Sudan and Ethiopia. Um, this migration is more driven by the seasonal changes between the wet and dry times of year rather than uh, the summer and winter like we see in the United States. But the one common characteristic between all of these is that they are repeated movements. So using the um, Brownian bridge movement model that we used for the corridor mapping team um, would be an effective, an effective strategy and what we hope to use for most of these populations um, to show the low, medium, and high use for each of them. But of course, there has, has to be exceptions like the Kulan that I showed earlier, um, these are much more nomadic movement style that um, don't necessarily repeat as much. Because of the heterogeneity of the landscape and unpredictability of vegetation and water, these species are not tied to repeated seasonal movements. And um, like, many, uh, like many other migratory ungulates that I have talked about, and they are more likely to move to new spaces, and you can imagine that these wouldn't be as well represented by um, corridors or uh, yeah, high, medium, and low use because they are uh, always moving to new places. But the vast majority of these maps will show low, medium, and high use. Of course, that's when the, we have enough data um, to make that work. In some cases, migration data could be more sparse, preventing us from reasonably identifying the low, medium, and high use. Uh, in these cases, a migration could be simply represented with a migration footprint and supplemented with other types of data, uh, like in this case, winter range and summer ranges, to help show the distribution of animals. And in even other cases, we may not even have the right type of data to produce um, routes and instead only have untimestamped point location data and expert knowledge. And from this, we can draw um, uh, preliminary corridors and ranges. But even maps like this are super useful in identifying conservation needs and for highlighting the need for more research. Um, the third challenge. Um, was finding and putting together all of the base data needed for each map. And here's a quick list of different data sources that I used during this process. Um, and this project spans such a large range of geographies and different scales that it's rare to find any one data set that is reusable for each map. And then even harder to decide on a symbology that works for each of them. Um, I, with the land cover classification, which is super simplified, I think I've changed the color of grassland um, in each new region that I've mapped. But despite these many uh, factors, um, we hope to end with a series of maps that are easy to interpret and can help educate future conservation decisions um, and are all clearly designed and branded to be recognizable as GUM maps. But even with this said, um, also still uh, understanding that the design must be flexible across a large variety of places, because these places all have different geographies, 
different data, different animals, and different stories to tell. Um, and also there are some inconsistencies, inconsistencies between maps because I am still in the process of figuring out all these designs. But hopefully when these are all released um, soon, it will be um, much more put together and I'm sure the design will look a little different at that time too. Um, and I'd like to recognize that I'm just one person in this initiative um, and it's with the help of many other collaborators, um, researchers, conservationists, and cartographers around the world that this is possible. Thank you.